Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How is everybody today? Can you hear me back there, Miss Houston? Okay, good, good, good. I saw you jump back. I wasn't sure if I was scaring you. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our July, oh my goodness, July 28th. Save the castle meet. Um, you see the agenda in front of you. Um, I'll tell you in advance, so if you want to leave. I am your main presenter today, uh, since I do have, as you can see, Eric Peterson out of the office, as well as Lindsay B. Good. So I'll be doing updates on their behalf today. Um, and then Stacey Abbott um, is the other main presenter who's here today. And then Majarka is on the um, update list. However, she, uh, I believe, is also tied up. And really, there were no questions for Majarka. And I don't really have an update from a food and beverage standpoint outside of what I'm going to show you that's happening across the way there in your main dining room. So, without further ado, um, we do have your resident council update. And today, Joe Schmidt drew the uh, lucky straw. Short. Oh, short, not lucky. <laughs> short straw. Uh, no, Joe Schmidt's going to give you a wonderful update on behalf of the resident council. Joe, take it away. Thank you. It was uh, put together by Kathy, so um, that's, at least I didn't have to put it together. That was a good thing. I also want to tell you that your communications committee has been hard at work, and later today on your shelves will be a new uh, directory with email addresses and uh, updated information, so watch for that. Okay, from the resident council. Um, we have a newly formed council committee. It is the art committee. And the art committee has met once and has formed uh, subcommittees for working on art in the uh, uh, apartment hallways, working with the designers for the common areas, and developing a program of art, of art exhibits from outside the ECP community that will go when we're done with renovation in the commons area, we'll go in this end of, of uh, the hall here. Uh, we have from the garden committee that Dustin and Jesus are working on the gazebo garden with coaching and consultation from Kathy's husband, Roy Johnson. Uh, we'd also like to thank Margaret Barkley for bringing irises and peonies for the gazebo garden. The Wellness Committee wants to know what interests or concerns uh, you have uh, that you believe could and should be addressed by the committee to ensure good health, wellness, and happiness in the community. Jot your thoughts and suggestions on a note and put it in Kathy's box 1305. Lifestyle Committee the monthly calendar has some new features that make it more useful to you for planning, and I'll let Stacy talk about that. The council has three major objectives, uh, three major projects at this time. Reviewing and editing the council bylaws to ensure open avenues of communication and providing opportunities for residents to contribute to an active and healthy lifestyle. Number two, updating the resident handbook to be a helpful reference where information is easy to find. And we are hard at work on that, but you won't see anything for a couple of months yet because it's a long project to do. Currently, we are reviewing the plans for the renovation of the fitness center. Please let a council member know if you have questions or concerns for the council to address. A flyer is posted in the mail room to tell you who is on the council along with their committee. And that's it. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Get outside. <laughs> it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, I wish I could be out there a little bit more. Um, next up, I did see Majarka stop in. Majarka, do you have any updates for the, anybody? Not really. <laughs> Not really. That is the update from Majarka. So <laughs> hopefully uh, everybody's been able to enjoy the buffets. The outside seating, I had the opportunity just to uh, round on Tuesday night and, and check in with the team that's doing a fantastic job. And again, credit to you all for, for your patience and understanding as if we get our new dining room going. 
Um, but again, credit to Majarka and her team. So if there are questions about uh, food and beverage, I, I mean, Majarka's here, she's available. Um, but thank you. Next up is Stacy. Stacy, our Community Life Director, has an update for us all. Take it away. Thank you, Tyler. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to address uh, transportation requests. We've been giving several, several uh, requests that are uh, like the day of or the night before, and we get them in the morning. And we're really having challenges with transportation to make sure that you guys ensure to get to your doctor's appointments. Um, if you have a doctor's appointment, please let us know in advance. Um, and then the proper procedure is to fill out a form. We've been getting sheets of paper. Um, we've been getting phone calls. Um, so we just want to make sure we're staying in procedure and that it's organized. Um, we do ask you to have a 48-hour advance notice so we can accommodate your request. Um, and if we're not getting that 48-hour request, we may not be able to do your transportation, um, which we are working to make sure we do have that. Um, also, um, if we have to accommodate through Lyft, if it's less than 48 hours, we may look at starting to charge. Um, so we just want to make sure that we are getting that proper notice and that we can accommodate your request. Um, and with that, um, also, um, I think that's all for that. Um, we have been getting a couple requests that are really far away as well. So just keep in mind, we are trying to look at the radius um, and what is an accountable um, distance that we can accommodate for your appointments. Okay, then we'll be touching base a little bit further about what that exact distance is going to be. PS Salon is open. Um, I know many of you have already been in there um, and been really happy with them on site. Another thing is, is we are not going to continue to charge for you going out to the salon since the salon is open. So starting August 1st, um, if you go out on your own to your salon, we will begin, begin to charge for those as well since we do have on-site salon open. Uh, calendars are out. One of the questions I was I asked was, why aren't we having social hour or happy hour every week? We used to have it every week. Prior to me coming, um, my understanding, it was a, a thing that they did for COVID. Um, they weren't having other activities and other things going on, and they would go room to room, and it was every week. Um, but now we are putting it on the calendar for bi-weekly, so every other week we'll be doing the happy hour. Um, as things evolve with the new bar, I'm not sure how that's going to look, but at, right now, um, Activities is providing the happy hour every other week. Anybody have any questions regarding that? Which is the week? Which is the week? <laughs> I can tell you right now. So this coming up week is not the happy hour. It's the next following week on, on August 10th. Okay. We've been just doing bi-weekly, so we just had one this week, mm -hmm. so next week we won't have one, and then it'll be the following week. Okay. So it kind of alternates depending on how the weeks are, so it's just every other week. So if you had a drink last week, you're not having one this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have one another week. Now that doesn't keep you guys from getting together on your own. Lindsay Hall is open. You can come in here and enjoy um, the atmosphere of being social. But we just will be providing the, um, the roving bar at the hour for you every other week. Um, as Joe kind of alluded to, we are doing a little bit something different with communications. We have started the email communications. You'll see weekly highlights go out in your email if you've provided an email. Um, raise your hand if you've received the weekly highlights. Has that been helpful? Yes. Okay, good. We're working on getting that to, to be a smoother process. So um, thank you for providing that information so we can make sure that happens. Also, to let you know, we also do audio highlights every week. Um, and if you tune into 955, those will be broadcast at 930, 1230, and 530. So you can hear what's happening during the week. Um, Voting Commission will be here. Special deputies were here yesterday. We worked with them, worked through the process. 
They will be back next Wednesday on the 3rd um, up in Water Tower, first floor in that TV lounge. This is gonna be your last time for them to be on site if you wanna vote, if you have an absent ballot, absentee ballot. Um, also, if you have any questions, let them know. We will do a um, ride out for voting on voting day. Seats are limited. We are gonna do one trip out, so the sign up will be out. That will be on August 9th. Um, best bet is if you have an absentee ballot, just to make sure that's put in on August 3rd. Um, you can submit it here with the special deputies. There is a Vision Forward outing going um, on August 2nd. Uh, with the support of the Vision Support Group has put together, we'll provide transportation. So if you have uh, the need for anything with low vision or you're curious of what support you need, um, they'll be doing a tour at Low Vision and having resources there, kind of telling what they can do for you. Also, on August 2nd next week, I just talked to a 16-year-old uh, uh, student. He is here from New York studying uh, robotic research at UWM. And so he has graciously volunteered to come share his music talent with us. Um, so he'll be providing about 30 minutes of music. He plays the piano and violin. Um, and I would love for if we could welcome him and support him. He is a nonprofit to support music around the world. Um, and he'll share a little bit about that. And so that'll be on August 2nd at 10.30 a.m. And I think those are just some quick highlights. Does anybody have any questions for activities or lifestyle? Can you tell me when we sent out the schedule? Uh, I don't have. Which schedule? I don't know, whatever you were emailing us. So I usually email the weekly highlights mm -hmm. the Friday before, Friday or Saturday. Sometimes it goes through on Saturday uh, for the next week. So you get it prior to the week before. Okay, so I should have gotten one last time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Should the uh, mail, I'm sorry, uh, should the uh, mail in ballots have been delivered? They should have been de delivered. If you have not gotten yours, let me know. I can reach out and let them know. Dave Tolan has not reached out. Okay. And also, David Tolan does support a music appreciation. Um, lecture and discussion and share of music every month. If you have not been to it, it is amazing. Thank you, David, for sharing that with us. It'll be an opera. You'll like it. Opera, and that's going to be on August 8th at 2.30 yes. right here. Yes. Anything else? Well, thank you. And if you if you enjoyed the pets yesterday, I um, thank you for coming. That was a really great activity. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I uh, I know Mike Bremer is not on the agenda. I'm sure he has a few updates. But to give you a little reprieve from myself, um, I will give the updates on behalf of Lindsay and Eric, and then I'll invite Mike back up. Hopefully that he won't take us till the two o'clock hour because I do have things to present afterwards, Mike. All right, so Lindsay Begut um, had an incredible opportunity to actually go out to Washington, D.C. this week. Um, on behalf of LCS, um, as an administrator, as a, as a young professional, um, she was able to attend the National Emerging Leadership Summit um, with Washington, D.C., where she met up with other administrators across the nation, and really for three days, they focused on the future of long-term care and gave input and um, actually were able to meet with some of the delegates out in Washington, D.C. So that's where she is uh, this week, um, hopefully uh, improving um, already our, our long-term care. But wanted to provide that our state um, survey that she mentioned uh, probably the last month um, did come back and we were cleared of all of our citations um, from our state surveyor. Uh, so we are back to, again, kind of our normal business operations, which really never left, um, providing the excellent quality of care in our health center area. Uh, but that, again, was a hurdle we did have to go over um, due to the annual survey that was performed back in March, April. Um, so again, credit to Lindsay and the team um, for the continued efforts that they put forth uh, in providing not only the quality of care, but also uh, with what the regulators are looking for. Does that include memory care as 
No, that, uh, the question was, does that include memory care as well as assisted? No, it does not. Um, the state surveyors are annually, and how the regulations are, are written, annually that they come to the healthcare center. So that's our skilled nursing license that's governed by the Medicare and Medicaid services. It's a federal license. The state license um, for our CDRF license, which is our memory care, and the RCEC license is once, usually every three to five years that the surveyors come in. Um, and again, unless there's um, a concern or something of that nature that they feel they have to come into. Um, our state surveyors came in last year and we received, I believe, one or two minor uh, deficiencies um, from the state of Wisconsin that were since cleared. Um, they will come back in um, uh, when we are complete with Bradford Terrace in our RCAC to license the two floors, uh, first and second floor of the RCAC. Any other questions? All right, then on behalf of Eric Peterson, um, who also will be here this weekend um, as a director, on call on Sunday, um, the question was, um, how long should it take for someone to uh, help with a work order? I put a work order in several weeks ago and I'm still waiting for someone to come by. So Eric and I chatted about this question and we chatted about it last uh, at the state of the castle as well. Um, the work order system um, is put in the work order with Lila or um, things of that nature. The work order system um, then goes to our maintenance team and the maintenance, tees, uh, maintenance team delegates amongst themselves to, to fulfill the work order. Um, if there's a work order that you feel has been outstanding for longer than you know 72 hours, go back to Lila, give Eric a call, give me a call so that we can follow up. Um, you know, if it's a light bulb, I'm going to share with you that is a lower priority than an air conditioning unit or something of that nature that's not heating or cooling properly. Um, same thing if the pool goes down, that all of a sudden jumps up to a priority as opposed to, to a light bulb. So in that event, there's a couple things, human errors can happen. One of the maintenance guys could have said, well, I talked to the resident, they said everything was fine, they checked it off, they go on, they move forward. Maybe it's because the human error element is somebody put it in for 3415 instead of 3416. And so they go to that residence unit and they say, can I help you with your light bulb? And they say, well, I don't have any light bulbs out. Okay, check, click the box and they're done. Meanwhile, 3416 still doesn't have their light bulb fixed, but we don't have any record of 3416 needing a light bulb fixed. So that's how things, human errors can happen. Standard work order, again, 72 hours. Um, if it's something emergent, you know, within 24 hours, I, I think our response team is even greater than that. Um, but if you're concerned that your work order was not put in, check in with Lila, check in with me, check in with Eric. Um, but again, if somebody is in the crowd that wrote this, stop by after and, and I'll see what I can do um, to, to get our maintenance team over there right away. The next question was, could the door that goes from the dining area to the balcony of the third floor of Bradford Terrace be repaired? Um, so if you are not aware, and I'll share with you, there's work going on up on third floor. We will get that door fixed with the work that's going on in the third floor. So in the kitchen, and I believe that is uh, the door we're speaking to, the dining from the dining room going out to that balcony um, is the door, I believe. Thank you. Um, that will get fixed along with all the cabinetry um, that's in that kitchenette that's getting replaced along with all the flooring, wallpaper, coverings, things of that nature. So that's when that door will be repaired. All right, uh, any other questions for Eric, aka Tyler? All right, with that, I will break up my portion and turn it over to Mike. Mike, do you have any update to provide? I'm sure you can come up with something. Right. I'll just make it up as I go. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Tyler. I had nothing prepared for. Are there any questions I can answer for anybody? <laughs> there are a couple things. Those of you that are treasure chest volunteers, you should have gotten your schedule on your ledge earlier this week for the month of August. There are a couple openings yet for the month of August. If you would like to fill in any of those open spots, please go down to the treasure chest. The master list is on the display board right behind the front desk in the treasure chest. Feel free to write your name in. 
And, and you can be an August volunteer as well or fill a vacancy for us. The September and October uh, volunteer lists are in the three ring binder up in the fireplace room right now. We really haven't done a push yet for September and October, so those schedules are wide open. Just start putting your name in wherever you are interested in, in working. Even if it's your first time, we'll make sure that you are working with a seasoned veteran and we'll, uh, we'll see that it all works out well for you. For those of you that are followers of Trivia with Mike on uh, Friday and Saturday and Sunday, Willie is my guest host this weekend. He'll be telling you all about the exercise programs. So tune in on channel 955. He does a, a, a wonderful job on that show. Getting back to the treasure chest, those of you that uh, are active volunteers with us already, and that totals 30 of you. 30 of you who donate over 500 hours a year to provide scholarships to our student employees. This is scholarship time. We have 10 employees that have taken out scholarships thus far. They're due back August 10th. If you know a particular employee that you think would really benefit and you're not certain if they've taken up or picked up an application yet, make sure that they, they come and see me. Um, unfortunately, the only thing about the program that's not flexible is the deadline. They have to have it in on August 10th because we like to be able to distribute the money early in September to have our volunteers review them, uh, have checks cut, etc. It's, it's a time-consuming process. August 10th is a firm deadline. Last but not least, um, I've been working today on my summer newsletter. You'll see an article in there, which I'm going to uh, pre prep you on a little bit right now. We're very pleased to say that East Castle Place has just been, um, it's just been confirmed that we received three and a half million dollars in tax credits. That's actually a pretty lengthy conversation. Um, that uh, uh, we could go on for the next half an hour on uh, trying to explain what it all means. So we're not going to do that. If anybody has any questions on what that means, there is information in my newsletter. I encourage you to read that or stop and see me at your convenience. But essentially what it means is that at the end of this construction period, we'll be able to pay down um, a significant portion of debt which will reduce all of your monthly expenses. The less we have to pay on debt, the less you have to pay in monthly fees, and that's what it means. Can I answer any questions for anybody? That's all I have. I'll turn it back over to Tyler. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, there's a resident question about the Wi-Fi. Sometimes goes out for a minute, sometimes much longer than that. Who should we call for help when this happens? So um, we have Kevin Gilversley, um, who I believe there's an IT presentation next month, um, but Kevin would be the individual you would want to call in that event. Now we do have a work order system for IT as well, similar to the plan ops situation. Um, so you can definitely put um, a work order through that way. That is the preferred way. But in the event that it's uh, you know more critical, again, it's done dur during normal business hours. Um, outside of that, if it is in the evening, something of that nature, again, you can try to call Fumato or um, one of our maintenance team members to, to help out. Um, but um, otherwise, I, I I haven't heard that our Wi-Fi is spotty. If it's consistently happening in your unit, please let me know. It could be that the, the receiver um, near your apartment is starting to, to fade or something of that nature. We need to look at a, a better issue. Um, otherwise, um, my old IT uh, suggestion is always turn off the computer and turn it back on, see if it works. So uh, that is the option. So. Monday afternoon, um, so Monday afternoon, we did have a down period for about five minutes. Uh, actually, it was probably five 15. Five times in a two hour period. What's your apartment number, Sandra? Thank you. I'll, is anybody else around Sandra having that issue? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Hoffman, what is your? 
Okay, might be on to something. Um, all right, so I will have them check that wireless access point. That's the, the piece that I'm talking about. Um, we need to make sure. So I have a note, I will speak with um, Kevin and Joe um, right after this. We have Joe, he's our IT manager, um, to, to check out that um, access point to make sure that, you know, and that was, is it back working now? Or is it kind of that hit and miss? Okay. Is that your experience too? All right, worst case scenario, I will have them come take a look for you. Thank you for that. All right, any other questions? Because otherwise I'm gonna take out really the next two um, in my presentation. Or my clicker's not working. So, um, let's get into it. So, I uh, wanna provide you a really old, big overview of our construction project, and so, um, where are we at? How are we doing? Um, how are our partners? How many of you were able to attend the CG Schmidt update uh, earlier this month? Okay, so you have a pretty good idea. Um, but then I heard some additional insight uh, in talking with many of you. So want to provide a, a little bit more definitive schedule update, which if CG Schmidt were in here, um, they would say, please don't, because it's construction, right? Um, so I have an asterisk on that. Um, schedule update, but I definitely am very comfortable, I ran these dates past them. Artwork, um, Joe Schmidt shared with you a little bit. Uh, wellness Center, I know there's a buzz about that, and if you know anything about me, I don't really like hiding from that, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then also, um, CG Schmidt did a video update for us in the construction area itself. So, um, and then of course, questions throughout that hopefully I have answers to. So again, for those of you, um, just as a refresher, project summary, um, why did we embark on this project? It's really to reposition and uh, East Castle uh, for the needs of both our current and our future residents here at East Castle Place. That was the driving force behind the board of directors' decision to move forward with this project. Again, our partners, who you see most likely here, is C.G. Schmidt, general contractor. They're the ones responsible for everything construction related. AG Architects is the architect that we've been working closely with for well over two years now. RDG's Design, um, who the artwork committee will soon be introduced to and has been with us this entire interior project. And then LCS Development, um, Ted Bowles from LCS has been helping manage this project um, alongside myself and of course our East Castle um, employees. The other main driver was having healthcare all underneath one roof. So again, moving our assisted living um, underneath uh, and in Bradford Terrace then adding our 30 additional entrance fee apartments, which helps pay down a lot of that construction debt, and then renovating um, all the common areas, and of course the courtyard, which has been getting a lot of work lately. Um, and I promise you, Betty, they are moving more than just piles and piles to look busy. Um, they, are, they are making some progress. Um, and then, uh, of course, adding, adding some additional amenities. So that, that were, those were the main driving points. And again, it all goes back to uh, the current and future residents and, and how East Castle Place is shaped. So a schedule next to it is an asterisk because as if any of you have gone through construction in your own home, much less on a larger project scale, you know that these dates can shift. So as of right now, Bradford Terrace is set to be completed on the 15th on or before the 15th of October. However, that is just the beginning because then we have to get licensed, like I was saying, and that's up to a 90 day process. And so I see a few assisted living residents um, like Miss Louise over there, um, who've been having one-to-one -one meetings um, with our team members about that move. As that date approaches and as I can get more clarity, we will have a better idea on when those moves are actually going to happen. So. I am pretty certain it is not going to happen on October 15th that our residents will be moving over. Um, but hopefully the building will be turned back over to us in my office along with Jen McEwen, Maureen Scribner, Heidi, Cooper, Anna, Mia, probably Miss Teresa. Oh yeah. We'll all, what's that? And the clinics. And we'll, we'll all be moving over into Bradford Terrace, probably on or around that date. Again, much more information to come. The Bradford Terrace third floor 
Um, I, I know a couple of residents have loved ones in, in this um, area. You saw that renovations had already begun about two weeks ago. You saw the first gasp of carpet um, be put down, and that was at the end of the hallway on that third floor. We are going to continue the carpeting. I had to put a pause on it because I, um, I the schedule just didn't quite meet the expectations. So I was able to sit down with C.G. Schmidt and come up with a much better plan about how to move forward with installing that carpeting, as well as there's some inputs from some families um, that were actually taking in and making some minor changes um, just to really the flooring. Uh, so that third floor is also getting a brand new activity space. And, uh, and that should be completed right around that same time, um, 10, 15, along with a new door um, to the balcony. The main dining room, bistro, and front desk. This is scheduled to be completed, including the artwork and furniture ready for service on or before November 15th. So the mantra that we've been going through has been by Thanksgiving, you will have your Thanksgiving meal in uh, in the dining room, right? We're still well on track for that. The courtyard, as you see below there, is ran into a few bumps. Um, and so I had a call actually at 2.15 today to discuss one of those bumps. But nonetheless, um, the, the garden committee and the work that was put in, it's still um, in full. And, and the, really the construction process is really due to some soil testing. Um, so if I have any structural or civil engineers out there, um, we have to go through some additional soil testing to make sure that the retaining wall and the new ramp that we're adding um, meet, meet the proper specifications. That has been the, the big hiccup kind of this week. Uh, but again, intention is to really turn that into your courtyard over the same time as the main dining room, except for the plantings, because it turns out planting perennials and beautiful flowers in December in Wisconsin, they aren't gonna make it. So we're gonna plant in spring. So the courtyard is going to look a little not pretty during the winter months. Um, hopefully we have some nice white snow um, to cover up some of that dirt. But then again, springtime, KEI is well prepared to make sure that they are off and running as soon as our, our plants um, become viable. And then lastly is the water tower renovations. Um, and again, these are set to begin around right after the new year. Um, so again, right around January. Um, it's kind of... So that's where I missed one of my bullet points because they're gonna flip over to the other side. Yes, um, and, and have no fear, um, but there's also, um, I believe we still want space to, to live and, and you know work through. So that's where there's gaps in schedules because there is time frame where they have to go from one side, turn it over, occupied, we have the roadways, we, then the construction team starts on the other one, right? On the other side. That shuts down the main entrance. We have to move the front desk back to the real front desk. We have to, you know, take out furniture and things of that nature. Doesn't happen overnight. And so we need to allow for some time to, to reassess. Again, the other piece of that is there's licensure um, that's happening um, within that time frame. Um, and I can assure you that if we can get things rolling, again, that's why I really hesitate to give out schedules. Um, their schedule is very built out and they are going to continue working here for, you know, up until July of next year when the project is set to be completed. Um, so yes, there are, there are some gaps, but I can assure you that those gaps are, are there so that we can ensure for your safety, for the construction safety, for different mobilization and things of that nature um, to, to be done. Like Lindsay Hall, um, that's a big piece of that, but at the same time, if we take down um, Lindsay Hall, the club room, as well as the library and things of that nature, and we shut down water tower all at the same time, where are we gonna have our meetings like this, right? <laughs> where are we gonna meet? So again, we're trying to have some strategic conversations so that you can still live, um, because they understand that that's very important. You have to continue living in your home, right? Yes, you're living in a home that's going under construction. Yes, you're being very patient and you've, you've, you've had some you know, different uh, things that, that you've given up. And again, I think we'll all be very pleased when we're all said and done. But that's why there might be some gaps in the schedule. That's why I'm very hesitant to put dates with schedules and talk in generalities. 
Um, but because uh, I had more than one resident say, Tyler, you're talking a little too much in generalities, um, I went back to a contractor to firm up some of these dates. I'm hoping we beat some of these dates, um, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that the schedule works for you, it works for our staff, and that it works for our contractors. Does that make sense? All right. So this is all the areas they're touching. So that's the entire building. Just wanted to share with you that, that um, this is currently the construction area, of course, as we can see the front door. Um, so we'll slide that up in. Artwork. So artwork has been a topic of conversation. Just wanted to hit on this. Artwork for the renovation is being selected by RDG Design, but the assistance of the residents as well as staff members um, is what is being um, wanted and needed right now. So. Um, Local artists are what um, I believe Joe was speaking to. We want to have a wall really outside here of gallery space where we'll feature a local artist um, once a quarter or whatever that may look like, do a gallery night um, and then have some of their artwork still um, hung and, and be here. So that's what the art committee is working through right now as well as the, really the rest of East Castle Place. And then the wellness center. Um, so I don't have um, the drawing up here uh, because it's it's a really tough to see, and b um, there's been a lot of different opinions about what the wellness center is and how it's going to be and things of that nature. But there was a question um, that I wanted to touch on about why the contemporary salon is moving to water tower basement, and why are we cutting the pool dressing rooms in half and putting a corridor through the men's locker room? So. Um, Again, that I'm working closely with the resident council um, on this and, and a few interested parties um, about this. And so again, all I will share with you is that again, these plans are submitted and approved by the city. That's not to say they're final, um, but there is um, reasons behind them. So again, the fitness center is currently planned to decrease the size of locker rooms, and that's to enhance the overall usable space. Because right now, um, there's two showers in each of the men's and the women's bathrooms. Um, and I know that pool users use the showers primarily. We're gonna be adding a shower um, in the pool area for more of a rinse off. It's not meant to be you know, a full blown bathing area. And then we're having two uh, showers um, that we can either designate one for men, one for women, um, or unisex, make sure we're doing our proper cleaning, things of that nature. Then alongside there, there's two private bathrooms. Um, there are benches throughout the, the, the fitness center. That was a question that came up um, that I didn't put any benches in the fitness center. Um, there are benches. Um, and so again, there's, it was really to create a more usable space um, in the wellness center. Um, and the, that's the other reason why the salon is being moved down there. It's so we can have all wellness components in one area. It's also to enhance the meeting spaces uh, for residents because um, there's a ton, a number of committees that meet on a day-to-day -day basis. And right now, Lindsay Hall and the club room are kind of it for, for meeting spaces. And so where the salon and the marketplace currently is, because again, the current general store is going down to the first floor, is going to be a larger conference type space where resident council can meet, our administration meetings can meet, um, you can meet in your various committees. You can do workshops in that area and not have to take up Lindsay Hall and, and do a lot of the rearranging of furniture and things of that nature. So that's where what's going in place of, of the salon. And again, we will have another salon that's going to be in the Bradford Terrace for healthcare. So that was the reason um, behind kind of the initial um, wellness center plans. And again, I know that there's a lot of questions. I know there's a lot of rumors going on about the fitness and wellness center. Um, all I can share with you is that the wellness center alone is probably getting over a million dollars worth of work being done into it. Um, so we're investing quite a bit in it. Um, the corridor going through the men's locker room, I, I would have to look at the plan um, because there are corridors going into the pool and out of the pool areas. Um, but I assure you that you don't have to go through a men's locker room to get to the pool. So um, with that being said, again, 
I'm sure there's a lot of questions. It probably makes sense to go into a separate fitness center, wellness center meeting um, after I speak with the resident council. Um, because again, there's a group of eight and there's split opinions in that group of eight on the wellness center. So um, I do know that I have a, a meeting upcoming um, with the resident council, with interested parties um, regarding the fitness center. Um, because again, we wanna make sure that, that we're doing it right for our current residents and our future residents. Questions, so that, that wraps up my portion. I do have a video to show you of, of, the, rec of the work that's being done um, behind the closed doors, although you can peer in through the windows. Um, but what questions can I answer? Yes? Uh, at the last resident council meeting, we brought up the request that you would put some dates on the scheduling and you provided that today and I thank you very much for doing that. Can that also be put in that uh, newsletter, news, uh, COVID update thing that you put out periodically? Sure. Uh, instead of just saying on schedule to put those dates down because I know a lot of people who are in here are very interested. Sure, and again, my only hesitation with that is I will put an asterisk next to it, and when it's you know October 16th and it is still out, you can come knock on my door, but I'm gonna say I'm sorry, construction's well, still late. But, but, we, we, we but as long as you're okay with that, I, I'm comfortable putting out some of those dates, um, absolutely. Sure, uh, we understand that there can be unexpected delays and things like that, but it's nice to have a conception of when the dining room is going to be open, you provided that. So thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Across from Mike Reeder's office, there is a meditation. Does anybody ever use that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Meditation. Okay. Thank you. Did you meditate? Fantastic. The, the, the current boardroom with the large table is going to stay. There is renovated plans, uh, new, new uh, fixtures and chairs, uh, things of that nature, but the boardroom is staying, yes. Joe. Do you have any idea when the commons area here will be done completely? So Joe has, Joe has a question about what the commons area will be done completely. And I think in talking with C.G. Schmidt, um, it really, I made them rework the schedule this week. Um, so my gut would say the project in total is done in July, um, end of July. My gut would tell me that this commons area will be done by April. But nobody can hold me to that because that's not on the schedule. So. Um, I'm also making sure that I, I run those paths, but it, and the only reason I say that is I think we'll have functional spaces ahead of that. The biggest concern and, and thing that obstacle that we all get to work through is, is the flooring, um, the flooring and corridor, um, because it, it's, it's a little bit more interesting than just laying carpeting. Um, and so there's going to be, you know, and they obviously still need to make sure you guys can get out of the building, right? So. <laughs> So that's where the final, final product, I, I'm a little hesitant to say, but I think functional spaces, um, you know, again, the dining room will be done in, in November. Um, and then it really means, you know, I, the biggest ask I had was, how quickly can you turn Lindsay Hall back over to me? Um, because this is our main meeting space. And so again, that was kind of where they said, you know, let's go back and, and try and figure out my rebel micro schedule. Um, because this space does get renovated. Um, that temporary wall that nobody uses, that I don't know even functions, is getting taken out. Um, wallpaper, even carpeting, um, they're adding in a couple doors here. The stained glass across is all stained. Um, but how quickly can we get that done? Um, because again, that's really a large piece. And so if we can take part of this down now um, and go through uh, um, maybe a month's worth of headache, um, before and get this back open, um, that's really what I'm asking. So that, again, the, you can live, um, we can live. Um, and so it, it's a lot that, I don't wanna say this was the easy part of the project because there is no easy part, um, but once they go to the other side, um, 
you know, and one question was the mailroom. The mailroom remains open during the entire project. Um, they'll put a tunnel up and there will be downtimes for the mail, but we'll make sure you get your mail every day um, and that Gary can come in every day. So, yes, hope that answers your question. And I, I can get a little bit more detail probably next month into when the entire commons area um, gets, gets going or is done. Okay. Getting back to the pool. Will outsiders still be coming in for So the question about the pool is outsiders still coming in and you know right now um, it, you know it's a community offering that we offer to the community as a not-for-profit. I've always said and Willie knows this this is your pool right and so again they I don't want to say community members aren't our priority in this project in the wellness center um, but if you're concerned that there's six people that use those showers usually at one time, well, then I've talked through that in the plan and that, that won't drive this plan at all. Um, what's going to drive the plan is you as residents and our future residents. That's what's going to drive the plan, not community members. Do we plan to sell community members and offer that? Yeah, I, I, I would like to think so. Um, I think it's a nice benefit as a great neighbor to the east side of Milwaukee. Um, but again, at the end of the day, this is your, your pool. Yes. Setting up a high fence for the community though, makes it, we can consider them your neighbor. Uh, there are six, seven, eight people that do come in simultaneously to get ready for the water aerobics uh, for the community. Mm -hmm. Now the community doesn't pay very much for that, so there are people here who feel that why bother? Uh, but if you're insistent on bothering about the community, then you should have adequate facilities them to come in in their winter coats, fully dressed, change rooms, and showers to accommodate, you know, 12, up to 12 people at a time. And uh, the difficulty with that is, you know, they can't stand in line that long to get to water. We're talking about, you know, a 10 minute deal to, to an hour. And so again, Willie and I have operationally kind of considered that. And yes, we will make sure that because we are licensed by the city for our pool. So again, they had to sign off on the plan in order for it to get to this point. And so adequate facilities is the entire goal, more than adequate facilities. Um, but yes, we, that's understood. Pat. And then also you have to consider that you're getting 30 new appointments in and how many of those are going to be using the pool also? So we don't, you know, it's, uh, I'm not satisfied with the two showers. I've got to say that. Yeah. Right. And, and then I have other residents that go back to their rooms to shower and things of that nature. And that's where the 50-50, the and that's where, again, we want to make sure there's a long-term goal and a long-term solution um, for, for everything. And again, that's where I want to continue working with the resident council. Um, I have brought it up to our contractors um, about what else we can do. And so um, Ted Bowles will be in on Tuesday next week and it's definitely on my agenda to speak with him ahead of the resident council um, uh, meeting next month because I have heard um, that there was concern, just like the courtyard, just like the artwork, just like uh, a lot of the, the concerns that have been brought up. Um, again, at the end of the day, I, I do listen <laughs> at, at times um, but again that that's where I, I want to make sure working with you working with contractors working with um, the budget which was also asked about um, for this project which is construction cost is 18 million um, that is the construction cost of this project so there's obviously financing fees and, and different things built in uh, but the pure raw construction cost is about 18 million We always got to take steps. As long as we're improving um, and we learn from our failures, it's not a failure. Um, that's what I've always been told. So, yes, we will continue to make those steps. And that's part of the operational piece that I was talking about in working with Willie. Maybe it is that community members are only allowed to swim from 5 to 7 at night when nobody's in that pool, you know? 
And if that those hours don't work for them, well, we're offering it and you know we're adjusting. So again, there are 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, of which if we swim for 365, we're in the pool for you know a, a fraction of the year. So we'll get through it. Um, and we'll try to make sure it's as effective and, and convenient for all parties um, involved as well as making sure it's, it's functional for the community for the long term. So that is our goal. And you're in the process of making arrangements for the in-house swimmers to have another facility uh, to swim in. That is correct. We are um, in process. Willie, Stacy, and I actually just went to the WAC up at North Shore and toured with them um, because the pool will be down four to five months. I know I left that off my slide. There's a good reason for that. It's not popular. Um, but um, turns out the city will not allow us to do construction on top of an occupied area. Um, so we don't have technically, once the construction starts, occupancy. And due to the a, a lot of mechanical systems that are in the garage right next to the pool, um, you probably wouldn't have heating and cooling in the pool or fitness center. So I don't know if you want to swim in that, um, but the pool will be shut down um, probably, you know, for six to seven months. Um, as soon as the water tower building goes down or not goes down is under construction. So does the fitness center. Now, trust me, I've had the conversations. How can we get the fitness center, you know, ahead? They've had a couple questions with their initial inspectors over here. And, that is a tough, tough ask. So um, we, Stacy, myself, have talked with Willie. Um, we met with the WAC. We have one more meeting specific to just the pool because the fitness center, we will have kind of a, a makeshift, and I hate that word, um, kind of a, a repurposed fitness center um, where we'll have a treadmill, we'll have a bike, we'll have some of those uh, free weights where Willie and Alicia can still do some yoga classes and the drum class and things of that nature. Um, that will be on site the duration of the project, um, but I can't figure out how to get a large pool somewhere temporarily and put back. <laughs> Unless somebody's got a really big bathtub. Um, so, yes, Mr. Maybe you already stated which months the pool will be down and which months the fitness center will be open. Yes. Do you have any idea of that? So, the months will be January through probably June or July. So um, along with that, would we be providing some transportation to that pool um, for for those time frames? Um, but yeah, that's that's the, the largest, you know, not the largest, but that is a headache um, and something that we'll have to work through. Um, so again, um, there's also another pool that I believe Stacy and I and Willie are going to go to or just specific more for pool access um, as opposed to the WAC that provides those fitness and aquatics classes. So. Well, we don't need to need our memberships so we can swim in their pool at any time. Correct. That's, that's what we're planning. So, what other questions? All right. Now will this link work?
Hunter. That is Hunter. Oh. I don't know why. It's not one to the brain. Well, anyways, are there any questions? <laughs> yes, there it is. Yes. Underground parking. How will that be affected and when? Underground parking, and I believe it's for those that may be in the water tower building that you might be asking. Um, the underground parking, unfortunately, also will be off limits, and so we will find new parking temporarily for those that are on, in the underground water tower parking in the Bradford Terrace Contemporary Parking a Garage. So you will still have underground parking um, and uh, during during that time and then um, we'll, we'll just have to work with you. How long or do you anticipate? What timing? January through July. So what other questions are there? All right. If not, just want to say thank you. Um, I just figured I could probably use him because this really went sideways. At least you all laugh and feel, you know, like him. So, no, that's my little guy. Um, he is growing up quick. Uh, he's a lot of fun right now. Um, and soon, he'll be a big brother. Um, so starting in uh, probably the end of November, you might not see me quite as much for temporarily um, because that's when um, my wife is due with our second baby boy. So very excited for that, but uh, Hunter's doing fantastic. Um, loving the water, loving summer, and really enjoy sunglasses, so. All right, if there's anything else, feel free. You can stop up uh, right after this. I do have a 2.15 meeting that I have to get to, but until then, I'm all yours. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the beautiful weather. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, rest of your July.